The first smartphone designed by Amazon is finally here. We've shown you its most fun features and run through its camera capabilities over at pocketnow.com. And now, after six days of testing, it's time to tell you whether you should be playing with fire. And before we plop down any more predictable puns, let's get started. I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, and this is the Amazon Fire Phone video review. The Fire Phone is a mid-sized handheld featuring once striking, now predictable, glass sandwich construction. Its build, consisting of Gorilla Glass and rubberized polyurethane, heavily resembles the Nexus 4, while its size and shape tend more toward the iPhone 5. It comes in any color you want, as long as it's black, and while it is quite susceptible to fingerprints, it feels nice and substantial in the hand. It's powered by a very capable set of specs, and though its display is only 720p at 4.7 inches, we don't mind. For all the focus on ultra-resolution panels these days, the Fire Phone's 315 pixels per inch are still plenty, and the four cameras dotting the corners enable a feature that makes resolution much less noticeable. That feature is called Dynamic Perspective, and it enables the best handheld 3D effect we've ever seen. Yes, it's a gimmick at heart, but Amazon has woven in some practicality here as well. Tilting the screen reveals details otherwise hidden, like the status bar up top, or helpful descriptors on menu items. It's odd at first, but you get used to it over time, along with the gesture-driven flick action the Fire Phone recognizes to pop open side panels in most apps. Sure, you can use your thumb if you're too self-conscious to do this on the train or at the bar, but the flick is handy for one-handed use, as is the tilt-to-scroll effect in the browser. Even putting the bells and whistles aside, it's hard not to appreciate a new interface after months and months of the same old thing. The home screen carousel displays recently used apps, books, movies, and so on in an almost never-ending ribbon up top while down below, a context menu appears for each of them, allowing you to do things like delete emails without even opening the app. Having the carousel on top and the context menus down below looks good, but for usability, we wish it was inverted. It's awkward to be constantly reaching up to the ribbon all the time. Also, not all apps can take advantage of the action area. Often, they just display related titles in the Amazon App Store, which is not very helpful. Speaking of the App Store, well, if you're like us, it'll impress you at first with popular titles, and there are even some cool games here that take advantage of the fire's dynamic perspective. But dig much deeper than that, and you're reminded that this isn't the Google Play Store. Gmail, Google Maps, Hangouts, nowhere to be found in Amazon's marketplace. If you're not too reliant on Google's ecosystem, well, then the Fire Phone will probably feel a lot like Windows Phone, in the sense that its stock apps are well-designed, responsive, and attractive. So it's not all bad. But the fact that many mobile sites identify the Fire Phone as an Android device and prompt you to download the app instead, even when such an app doesn't exist, is galling, and only serves to remind you of the limited catalog you're forced to deal with if you don't want to sideload apps. Amazon's media offerings are much more impressive, of course. The company has found a nice way to showcase this using Firefly, a nicely designed app, which is the main reason people have taken to calling the Fire Phone an expensive barcode scanner, but it can do more, like replace Shazam as a song identifier. And we really like how quickly it can identify a movie or TV show, too. The free year of Amazon Prime you get when you buy a Fire Phone is also nice, but in terms of media, at least, it doesn't bring quite enough to overcome the App Store's lack of many quality titles. If there's one glaring problem with the Fire Phone, it's a familiar one for smaller platforms, the ecosystem. Shooting photos with the Fire Phone's 13 megapixel camera is a lot of fun. The viewfinder is simple and can be launched with a touch of the side key, and it's smart. It suggests HDR when applicable, which can then be enabled with a tap. It also offers a fun lenticular shooting mode, so you can create photos that respond to dynamic perspective. Photo quality itself is okay. The Fire Phone has the same exposure sensitivity issue as some other devices we've seen, so where you focus has a big effect on whether a photo is washed out or very dim. There's also not much dynamic range, saturation is often on the low side, and while HDR does help sometimes, it also washes out colors even more while introducing more fuzz to the picture. 
Low-light performance certainly isn't the worst we've seen, but it's also nothing spectacular, despite the optical image stabilization. On the upside, all of the photos you take are backed up on Amazon Cloud Storage for free. 1080p video recording is fun, in that you get a nice, smooth image on the viewfinder. That said, the focus tends to drift easily, the colors don't pop quite as much as we'd like, once again, and the microphone is very easy to cover up accidentally without knowing it. The Fire Phone is well designed from an audio standpoint, at least for voice calls. There's great, warm side tone in the earpiece, and in loudspeaker mode, one caller said they couldn't tell we were on a speakerphone. The speakers are mounted at top and bottom, which makes for some nice stereo effects in landscape, but while they're loud, they're also so tinny that we really don't like using them if we don't have to. Fortunately, the Fire Phone comes with earbuds in the box. Their acoustic merits are debatable, but they do feature magnets to keep them bonded, and that great Linguini-style wire that we like so much. The Fire Phone is exclusive to AT&T, so you'll be happy to know that our testing on Big Orange went quite well. LTE speeds initially weren't as blazing fast as we've grown accustomed to, but they sped up as our six-day review period went on. And having coverage everywhere, from the burbs to the Boston subways, is always nice. As we mentioned before, gaming is a real pleasure on such powerful hardware, but you're definitely going to want to take a charger with you if you're planning on anything close to heavy use. We haven't even been able to get to four hours of screen on time with the Fire Phone, and we've absolutely needed to charge it every night, usually before the day is even over. While we are using it more heavily than you probably will, this is no phone for road warriors. In a sense, the Fire Phone is surprisingly predictable. It brings equal parts novel delights and first-generation pain points. On the plus side, its interface really is a breath of fresh air. Amazon features like WhisperSync, X-Ray, ASAP, and others really are useful. And even its gimmicks are charming, mainly because they actually work the way they're supposed to. The stumbling block here is the ecosystem hit, combined with a price point that's just too high considering the competition. If every other platform out there bores you to tears, or if this is your first smartphone, or if you really are a die-hard Amazonian in every sense, well then, the Fire Phone is a great buy. But that's a pretty small audience. For everyone else, you'll get a lot more for your money going with one of the major platforms. Amazon's first smartphone isn't a bad product by any means, but it is twice the price it should be. For more on the Amazon Fire Phone, check out these videos and visit pocketnow.com on August 1st for our full written review. Also be sure to follow us on social media and leave a comment down below letting us know what you think of the Fire Phone. The comment section is right next to the like button. Please press it if you enjoyed this review. Until next time, this has been Michael Fisher with Pocket Now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you very soon.